Hello, everyone, and we thank you for joining us for the 47th Mets Weather Weekly Weather News. Today is Wednesday, April 25th, 2012. We thank you for joining us as we've been doing for the last three weeks in the month of April for Autism Awareness Month. We've been talking all about autism. And this week is going to be the final week we're going to be talking about autism. We're going to be focusing in on this week. It's a lot of, uh, we're going to be talking about a lot of toxins and food. It's kind of going to branch off of what we talked about last week with the dairy-free, casein-free diet. And it's going to, we're going to kind of talk about a lot of toxins that are in foods today that play a major role in autism spectrum disorders and some other well-known diseases as well. But as always, first, your WFSB Channel 3 Early Warning 7-Day Forecast. Uh, first, there is a weather alert currently in effect. A frost advisory has been issued for all of Connecticut, except for the shoreline tonight into tomorrow morning, tonight into Thursday morning. As temperatures are going to be in the upper 30s, low 40s overnight tonight. Possibility for some frost. Bring those plants indoors if they're outside. Tomorrow, Thursday, April 26th, partly sunny early, then becoming cloudy with rain, likely, especially later in the, later in the day. High 63, inland 60 to shore. Friday, partly to mostly sunny breezy. High 59, inland 60 to shore. Saturday, sun early, becoming mostly cloudy. Chance for rain at night. High 61, inland 59 at the shore. Sunday, Shower chance early, then a mix of sun and clouds, high 56 inland, 57 at the shore. Monday, mostly sunny, high 62 inland, 63 at the shore. Tuesday, mostly sunny, high 65 inland, 63 at the shore. And on Wednesday, May 2nd, a mix of sun and clouds, high 70 inland, 65 at the shore. So overall trend for the next few days, kind of a little bit of rainy, dreary scene. But as we kick off next week, the uh, first week in May, it's gonna sun will prevail. Okay, and now let's move on. We're gonna be talking about right now some toxins in food and toxins in the environment that play a great role in autism in autism spectrum disorders and some other diseases that are out there as well. First thing we're, we're, there's this list here, there's quite a huge number of different chemicals, but I'm gonna talk about some of the ones that stand up the most to me that I find to be really the most important that be aware of and stay away from. First thing we'll be talking about today is MSG. Um, MSG is monosodium glutamate. Um, there are a lot of, however, kind of cover names for this MSG. And we're going to give you a list now of all the different names that you might find on the ingredients list of a product that contains this. Um, that basically means the same thing as monosodium glutamate that kind of almost disguises it in a way that for you to look out for. Monosodium glutamate is also called hydrolyzed vegetable protein, hydrolyzed protein, hydrolyzed plant extract, plant protein extract, sodium caseinite, yeast extract, texturized protein, autolyzed yeast, hydrolyzed oat flour, or calcium caseinite. So those are all, again, names for one ingredient called monosodium glutamate, it's something you should really stay away from. And um, things that may help combat an MSG reaction, B12 and B6 vitamins, magnesium, taurine, and digestive enzymes. So look at that, a lot of all natural um, solutions to a reaction to MSG. All natural conquers all. Anywho, moving on now to um, aspartamine and other artificial sweeteners. Now, as you know, you know, we have Splenda out there, you have Equal out there, you have, you know, a lot of those sweeteners, you know, for people who are trying to stay away from sugar, people who are diabetic or people who are just trying to stay away from sugar in general, they use these sugar-free, these sugarless sweeteners in, in place of sugar. But how do they taste like sugar when they're not sugar? Simple. They use these artificial flavors, artificial sweeteners to make them taste like sugar. And that's not good. You should stay away, from, stay away from a lot of them. Aspartamine is the technical name for the brand names NeuroSweet, Equal, Spoonful, and Equal Measure. Cerocluse is basically contaminated table sugar. Aspartamine accounts for more than 75% of the adverse reactions to food additives reported by the FDA. Many of these reactions are very serious and include seizures and death. Some of the 90 different documented symptoms reportedly caused by aspartamine include headaches, migraines, dizziness, seizures, nausea, numbness, muscle spasms, weight gain, rashes, depression, fatigue, irritability, insomnia, vision problems, hearing loss, heart palpitations, breathing difficulties, anxiety attacks, slurred speech, loss of taste, vertigo, memory loss, and joint pain. 
Aspartamine is phenylalanine, 50%, aspartic acid, 40%, and methyl, aka wood alcohol slash poison, 10%. That's what aspartamine is made up of, and it's found in artificial sweeteners like NeuroSweet Equal Spoonful and Equal Measure. Uh, Splenda is also something else that contains artificial sweeteners that you should stay away from. Now, if you're trying to kick your sugar habit, stay away from sugar, which is good because sugar really isn't that good for you to have a lot of either. Um, there are some all-natural sweeteners available out there that are just as good, if not a lot better. Uh, one that comes also in a syrup form that is very low in sugar, naturally very low in sugar, that tastes great. Uh, agave nectar is an all-natural sweetener. You should give it a try. It's really quite good. And um, all-natural stevia extract is an all-natural um, sweetener that you should give it a try. Okay, next thing we're going to be talking about is arsenic. Arsenic is in rice and rice milks, mainly in non-organic rice and rice milks show levels of arsenic. Arsenic is a poisonous chemical often used in herbicides and pesticides and is classified as a class 1 cartogen, meaning it is highly toxic to humans. Other class 1 cartogens include asbestos, formaldehyde, hepatitis B and C viruses. According to so you see if this arsenic is linked with all these other, you know, funguses and diseases, it's really not something you want to be consuming. And it is um, in a lot of non-organic, I should say, rice and rice milks. So, you know, organic versions of rice and rice milks normally don't have arsenic in them. Be sure to read the label. Be sure to look out for it. But a lot of non-organic rice and rice milks show a certain level of arsenic. Be sure to check on that before you eat your rice and drink your rice milks. Because I know um, a lot of people try to do rice milks, you know, to avoid the dairy. Um, but um, it's not always the best thing. Uh, an alternative to regular milk and an alternative to rice milk and an alternative to soy milk. We'll talk about soy a little bit later. Um, there are two milks that I, I find that are very good that can still get you your calcium that you need. And they're free of all that stuff. Uh, coconut milk is a very good one. And also almond milk are two very diff good different types of milk that are completely dairy-free, casein-free, soy-free, arsenic-free, and all that other stuff free. A uh, good replacement for that. Next thing we're going to talk about is a one that is found a lot with, you know, Hummel's hot dogs and hot dogs. Nitrates and nitrites. Foods containing nitrates or nitrites like those in preserved meats. Those in preserved meats. If you're buying all natural meats, organic meats, they don't contain these things. Bacon, ham, hot dogs, and pickles should be avoided. Since children with autism are known to have higher levels of these toxic derivatives of nitric oxide stored in their bodies due to an inability to detoxify. Also, nitrites in foods are proven to cause increased death rates in those with Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and diabetes. The study, published in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease, found strong parallels between age-adjusted increases in death rate from Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and diabetes, and in progressive increases in human exposure to nitrates. Nitrites and nitrosamines through processed and preserved foods as well as fertilizers, thus making organic food even more important because most organic food, uh, orga organic hot dogs, organic meats, organic pickles, organic ham, organic bacon, all don't contain these nitrates or nitrites. So. Most times, if it's organic, nitrates and nitrites are not present in the food. Now, something you might want to um, really, just to kind of, if you're not too sold on this right now, notice that I'm having a lot of difficulty pronouncing a lot of the words here. Um, that's mainly because they're very long scientific words. And when you're, you know, dealing with reading ingredient labels and reading these scientific words that are on re regular food ingredient labels, do you really want to be eating something that has some fancy scientific name for something? I mean, that just shows that it's just, who knows what it is for sure. You know what I mean? Just something else to think about. Another one that I really want to pay close attention to, soy. Soy is a regime that is grown in highly chemically processed even the organic versions of soy are highly chemically processed. Virtually all soybeans grown today are genetically modified. Many countries outside the U.S. won't accept U.S. grown soy due to the 
to, due to the carnogenic chemicals in genetically modified status. Research has shown that the pestrogens in soy may play a role in breast cancer, so it should be avoided by females and males too. Raw soy flour is also known to cause pancreatic cancer in rats. Soy is also called soya outside the U.S. So really, it's linked to cancer, linked to a lot. It's really grown in a chemical environment, even the organic versions. Ten, I know like about 10 years ago, soy was all the rage. Not so much now. It's really something that you should avoid most of the time. And another one that is widely speculated, high fructose corn syrup. A lot of people say it's just another form of corn syrup, another form of sugar. Um, well, I'll tell you this about corn really quick. Corn itself, our bodies can never really fully break down. Corn isn't real, is, or most people's bodies can't really completely break down corn. Corn, even the vegetable corn, it's, it isn't really bad for you to have, but your bodies never really break it down completely. And you don't really get that much out of it. Anywho, high fructose corn syrup, a lot of people say it's just like corn syrup, just another type of sugar. Well, that's not really the case. High fructose corn syrup, researched by the IATP in 2009, very recently, just in 2009, shows a significant level of mercury in products that contain high fructose corn syrup. High fructose corn syrup is found in sweetened beverages, sodas, bread, cereals, breakfast bars, lunch meats, yogurts, soups, and condiments. When making high fructose corn syrup, colistic soda, among other things, is used to separate corn starch from the corn kernel. For decades, high fructose corn syrup has been made using mercury grade caustic soda produced in industrial chlorine plants. Produced in industrial chlorine plants. The use of mercury cells to provide caustic soda can contaminate caustic soda and ultimately high fructose corn syrup with mercury. Currently, there is no way a consumer can tell where the high fructose corn syrup or any, other, or any other ingredient in their processed foods came from or how it was produced. So avoiding all products containing high fructose corn syrup is the safest course of action. Please be aware that some honey, because of B, the B, excuse me, I'm going a little too fast, because of the B shortages is now being diluted with high fructose corn syrup to make it taste just like regular honey. So therefore, taking like a half a bottle of honey and filling the rest of it with high fructose corn syrup and mixing it in. So it all tastes like honey, but it's really, all chemicals are mixed in there too. Be sure to buy organic honey. Um, your safest bet is to only buy honey from a local bee grower. And remember that real honey will crystallize. Honey with high fructose corn syrup won't. A label that says pure honey, organic, or U.S. honey doesn't necessarily mean it's 100% safe. So make sure you know where your honey is coming from. High fructose corn syrup is also shown to um, partially clog the liver when consumed regularly. So that's something you should really stay away from. Um, different colors in dyes that, you know, food dyes, color dyes, food dyes. There are also some dyes found in soaps and things like that. Now, here's the interesting thing. You have dyes and soaps to make them colorful. I, one, one thing, I really don't know why soap needs to be colorful. And uh, secondly, if you have these dyes that have been used in soaps, and you'll get sick if you eat soap, obviously. What makes those dyes that are being used in soaps edible when you put it into, say, I don't know, cupcake frosting or something like that? It doesn't. That's exactly what I'm getting at. Dyes are artificial. They're fake. They're man-made. They're not natural. They're, our body can't break down dyes. It can clog up a lot of stuff, and it can affect behavior with people with autism because it clogs, you know, um, how do I explain this? It clogs, like the, it clogs, it basically makes your body have a lot more difficulty processing food and absorbing nutrients that it needs from healthy foods that you do eat. So artificial colors and dyes have been proven many times to cause hyperactivity in children. Dyes, water soluble, and lakes, fat so include yellow 5, red 40, blue 1, blue 2, green 3, orange B, red 3, and yellow 6. Some artificial dyes are carnogenic and some are not vegetarian. Not really much information on dyes here in this article, but like I said, dyes are artificial. They're man-made. They're not natural. It's not something you want in your body. Um, and really, dyes don't increase the flavor of like, say you want that green frosting on the top of the cupcake. That doesn't 
if you don't put that green frosting in the frosting, that green dye in, and it's just white frosting, it's not going to change the taste of the frosting, obviously. It just makes it green. So you're better off not putting that dye on the cup, like in the cupcake frosting, and just leaving it the color it naturally is. It's not going to taste any different with the dye. Okay, now artificial, we're going to talk about a few artificial preservatives. BHA, BHT, TBHQ are the main nasty preservatives found in foods. They are generally used to keep fats from becoming rancid. It is also used as a yeast defoaming agent. BHA is found in butter, meat, cereals, chewing gum, baked goods, snack foods, dehydrated potatoes, and beer. Of all things, beer. It is also found in animal feed, food packaging, cosmetics, rubber products, and petroleum products. So beware of, especially where it's ladies, beware of where your makeup is coming from because it could contain some of these preservatives. And think about it, putting these ugly, icky preservatives on, on your face and on your body. Um, TBHQ is commonly found in fast food products. Fast food products obviously are usually unhealthy in general, but this makes it even more so, as well as being carnogenic. Preservatives are also shaky light. See, even more words that, you know, who knows what exactly they are. There's a million different articles that say a million different things about the same word. Same, you know, artificial preservatives and things like that. Now we're going to talk about pesticides for aid on food, you know, such as non-organic fruits, such as apples, pears, you know, plums, things of that nature. Today's, uh, you know, like berries, like your strawberries, blueberries, and so on. Today's grocery stores carry a dizzying array of fresh produce, which is wonderful, but it can also be drenched in pesticides, which is indeed awful. And not everything is available in organic. Now, obviously, you buy organic fruit, no pesticides on it at all. That's what organic means when it comes to fruit. Here is a, you can use a veggie fruit wash to clean your produce, your pr fresh produce, but however, that doesn't always eliminate all the pesticides that a lot of these non-organic fruits are drenched in um, and you're putting those, you're eating the apples and you're eating the fruits. I'm sure you still get all the good out of them, but you're also taking these ugly pesticides in your body. You're much better off with organic. Uh, it doesn't contain any of that stuff. You still wash organic fruits and things like that, fruits and vegetables and things like that, but organic foods don't have any, you know, that stuff on them. So you're just getting all the good from the fruits and the vegetables that are organic and none of the bad stuff. see okay now here's a very interesting one that we're going to end with today amyl jam dental fillings so there are certain dental fillings that contain mercury mercury fillings mercury which are mercury fillings be sure to have any amyl jam fillings removed by a mercury free dentist who has been specially trained in the methods used to limit the exposure to mercury during removal visit this site by state listing of specialty dentists. Okay, well, basically, you know, if you're a little bit of an older person, 30, 40, 50 years old, and, you know, you had a lot of cavities filling as a kid, likely they were filled with, you know, metal, uh, which contained mercury. And at that time, they didn't really know how bad mercury, how lethal mercury is to humans. So if you still have those metal cavities in there, just be sure to visit your dentist soon, a dentist who is trained in removing these mercury cavities without exposing a lot of the mercury to your body and because you know in your mouth you know to, that are trained to be able to remove the metal fillings out without any mercury kind of getting into your body and then refilling them with the white composites that uh, dental fillings that they have today that's basically in a nutshell and basically kind of just um when i kind of started the dairy free case and free diet um probably about like nine or so years ago now <clears throat> excuse me um it, it was when i was in the second grade like right before my second grade year we started with this when i was in first grade i was very sick all year constantly sick i missed like i think 30 days or 30 school days just when i because i was really legitimately sick uh i had asthma at that point asthma all my first grade year and everything i was always sick i always had kind of problems with my stomach and things like that and my behavior was you know very hyper i used to like to flap my arms a lot I still do now on an occasion have sensory overloads, but to a much less extent ever since really the gluten-free casein-free diet. So when I go on this little, I don't even like to call it a diet. When I start eating gluten-free casein-free, 
uh, before second grade year, um, asthma suddenly kind of just went away, magically disappeared. <clears throat> um, and it was really wonderful. And that whole second grade year, I probably missed not even a whole week of school from being sick. I was immediately, automatically, completely improved. Um, and in addition to that, starting, you know, to take a lot of vitamins and supplements, a lot of B vitamins, compensate for deficiencies in B vitamins, which can also um, make, the, make, you know, autism more severe, deficiencies in B vitamins, which help the central, <coughs> excuse me, without, which help the, B vitamins, you know, help the nervous system function, help your brain function properly as best as they can. And um, lack in B vitamins, people who are on the autism spectrum can make their already out of whack nervous system even more so. You know, I started taking these B vitamins and multivitamins and supplementing with things like calcium, magnesium, and things like that at that time. Um, also played a role in that huge improvement as well. And ever since then, I've been doing very well since then. Really just been kind of very healthy since then. I mean, you know, obviously everyone gets sick every once in a while. It's just what happens. You know, diseases and things go around, come around. But kind of more like just kind of just much improved. It's just amazing the, just by eating a certain way how much it changes um, how you function, how much better you can function. Um, that'll basically do it for the 47th Matt's Weather Weekly Weather News and that will do it for our information information sessions on autism. We hope you learned a lot this month. If you have any questions about autism, be, don't be hesitate. <clears throat> excuse me, email me at mattsweather one at aol.com. And if you have any concerns or if there's any important autist information on autism that I didn't get to or I didn't cover that you'd like me to talk about, <coughs> excuse me, I have an itch in my throat that you'd like me to talk about in the near future, let me know. I, I will definitely include those in future Matt's Weather Weekly Weather News is in addition to what we'll be talking about regularly. Okay, and we hope you join us next week on Wednesday, May 2nd, for the 48th Matt's Weather Weekly Weather News. We hope to see you then.